Hello there. Welcome to the latest edition of Money Matters, because I'm sure you would agree money does matter. Now, what I want to talk about this week is joint ventures, money, and specifically the only place in the entire world that there's actually a shortage of money. Do you know where it is? It's here. In your head. Let me introduce you to the wonderful Mr. Ron Thompson. He is one of our fantastic joint venture partners. So, Ron, just in terms of your background, you're a, you're a solicitor, you're a, yeah. a legal guy, yeah. but you're not a normal legal guy. So, no, your career, no. how, how did you become a solicitor? Uh, I started off in industry. I worked at um, Sellafield, Newport Power Station, for 12 years. Yeah. Um, I got, but I got involved in the trade unions whilst I was at Sellafield. Mm. Um, and I became the uh, site convener when I was when I was only 19. Mm. The present site convener, if you like, I, I thought it was a bit of a, a management puppet myself. Right. So it was in the days of mass meetings where you put oh, your yeah, hands yeah, to yeah, vote yeah. and things. And he said some of the, oh, it's just rubbish. And the, mm. Nobody was challenging him. Mm. So I sort of stood up and I said, that's just not right. Mm. I said, you're just a bit of a management puppet, so I don't really think we should accept what you're saying. And he said, well, I've been doing this job for years, so mm. let's have a show of hands to see mm. if they want me to do the job or if they want you to do the job. Well. And of course, I, I won. <laughs> Blimey. And, uh, and didn't really, do, didn't really know what to do from that point. Um, so I stayed with the trade unions and eventually they, they offered me promotion if I would pass the union work in. Yeah. Uh, sort of nine years later and I, and I wouldn't pass the union work in. Mm -hmm. So I left and I went down to Ruskin College in Oxford when I was 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Barbara, my wife, and two young kids at that point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd done two years at Ruskin, which acted like my A levels, because I don't mm -hmm. have any A levels at all levels. So it was the Labour Studies Diploma that got me into Leeds University where I'd done my law degree. And then um, my college a lot, done the um, legal practice course at College of Law in York, uh, worked with some trade union firms, and then set my own firm up in 2009 as a consultant first, and then Haven Solicitors in 2014. Fantastic. So, a 19-year-old convener, <laughs> uh, I think you've never told me that before. All right. <laughs> I knew that you'd come to the legal profession relatively late in life. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, it was Sellafield you worked yeah, at, wasn't it? Yeah. I knew you'd worked at Sellafield. So we're all different, aren't we? You've never really moved away from that kind of union roots, have you? And you've no. always... Even as a law firm, you've represented the right... Would it be fair to say you've represented the rights of the individual? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've never, never acted for an employer. There you go. Um, in twenty odd years of being a solicitor. Perfect. Uh, and in fact, the, my my firm's motto is right against might. There you go. Um, so I think that's sort of pretty the, much a clench raised fist. Come the revolution. Yeah. The... We got to know each other hmm, last year, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so some of you will know, some of you won't. That we've got a group of property firms. Uh, so we've got property investment, we've got a state agency, we've got a letting agency, we've got property training. So the, the obvious next step for us was to form a partnership, you know, invest in a law firm, because so, obviously legal work is a key part of, of the property work. From your perspective, you weren't actually doing any property work. No. And from a kind of stage of life planning, it, would it be fair to say that you got one eye on retirement at some point? Well, oh, absolutely. So that you, you let it come through the door of the blue. And yeah. It's, you know, it's, uh, I think it was Richard, Richard Bronson who said, everybody has luck. It just some people don't act on the luck when mm -hmm. it happens. And I read your letter and I, I thought, oh, so I've done a bit of research on the yeah. on the internet and found that you and Annika were actually real people and you, <laughs> did, you did exist. Um, and, you, and you were totally convinced by my uh, claim that I would pay you in uh, gold coming out of some Why? West African. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so we did a deal. Yeah. And I mean, fair to say, it makes sense for both of oh, us. Yeah? Absolutely. I think what, what you're doing on the conveyancer side of things. Um, is, is brilliant and I think it'll revolutionise you to be honest. Thank you and likewise we're, we're delighted to be able to work with you. Yeah. So any joint venture has got to be a genuine win-win, has to be a genuine win-win. It, it's not a question of Ron stitching me up or well, good luck stitching up a lawyer but you know even if I could <laughs> stitch up you know, it, it, it's got to be a genuine win-win. Yeah. What I want to turn to now is having had that experience of doing a joint venture with Ron to do with the you know, investing in the law firm, uh, you decided you'd be quite interested in learning about investing in property, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So you, you went and joined our mastermind. I did. Yeah. And yeah, yeah have you found that so far? Oh, it's been brilliant. It's all things I thought I knew in the past that I yeah. clearly didn't know, or well, I didn't know there's assumptions yeah. I had in the past and they were just wrong. Yeah. Um, so it's been a real eye opener for the last eight months. Brilliant. And one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is we've had a couple of conversations to put, sort of put words in your mouth. You've said, well, you know, it's all right for other people. You can see other people raising money, 
but you've, it's not normal to you yet to take private money and put them into uh, great property deals, is it? No, no, not at all. I want your help to help this man understand that it is yeah. normal. That's where I'm going with this video. I want you to talk to me now, Ron, about the deal. Okay. <laughs> Don't go and tell everyone because it isn't actually all signed, <laughs> sealed, and delivered yet. But it's, you're from the lakes, yeah, originally, yeah, yeah, born, yeah. bred, whatever. Yeah. And this particular property is in the lakes. Yeah. So without giving us the address, can you tell us a bit about the property? Yeah, it's uh, it's on the, on for sale at the moment, and it's um, presently being run as a five bedroomed guest house, bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. with two bedroomed um, owners accommodation. Mm -hmm. Um, the owner, I, I don't, the boss, the vendor, I don't know why he'd done this. He, he had applied for a change of use to residential yep. only mm -hmm. when he sells it. Um, so I went and had a chat with him and told him what we wanted to do, which is he's running it as a seven bedroom, single dwelling, mm -hmm. service accommodation for the larger families. Because I've got five kids myself, I know you've, yeah. got, you've got six. I've got six, yeah. and, and it's quite hard to find a decent sized home yeah. for a holiday for yeah, one family or an extended family. So I did chat with what to do. He was quite happy and the vendor has actually agreed and he's done it now to put, put the planning permission in uh, for change of use to a service accommodation for us. So we, we didn't have to do that. Brilliant. Um, so there's been, there's been um, we got some predictions from Sykes Cottages and Lake Lovers. Mm -hmm. And Sykes Cottages said you could expect income between 99,000 to 124,000 a year. And Sykes Cottages, by the way, you can see here some pictures of a fairly large home in Scotland called Dunera. Sykes Cottages look after that one for us. Mm -hmm. And even off season, we're getting about six and a half thousand pounds a week, right. which is insane. Yeah. So I complete. I know this property isn't quite that size, but yeah. I completely buy into. You know, yeah. I love Sykes Cottages. Yeah. He's taught me to say there are other holiday letting firms <laughs> available. So this is no recommendation for Sykes Cottages. I'm just saying I am to use them. Who are the other ones? Um, Lake Lovers, who, who have actually been bought out by Sykes Cottages. Oh. Um, so they're all part of the same group. Right. Yeah. Um, so Sykes Cottages said 99,224. Lake Lovers said 100,000 to 125. Well, so they're both heard of there about the same, yeah. same figures really. As you know, we've we've re well, relatively recently acquired a property in Bowness in Windermere. We're looking at about eight hundred pounds a night for that. Right. So <clears throat> six grand a week, five, five six grand a week. That's yeah. what I'm Some critical things I want to draw out in terms of some educational pieces here. Um, the change of use to service accommodation is, is critical because if you're buying it as residential, that would be stamp duty would be yeah. very high. Yeah. The fact that it's uh, a commercial use means commercial stamp duty, so that's yeah. that's going to save a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fact that it's service accommodation means you can claim capital allowances. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So up to a million pounds per person, tax free per year. Did you know any of this stuff before you joined? No, not absolutely, not not a thing. Right. I, I always thought that you know the only way you could get into property development or investment was if if you had your own pot of money. If to, you had a lot of money to start with, yeah. And a lot of people think that. A lot of people yeah. think you can only get wealthy through property if you've already got a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. It's actually back to front. You actually get you actually get the property, and that makes you wealthy, and that yeah. gives you the money, not the other way around. In my experience. Yeah. But anyway, focusing back on this property, uh, you now are very well aware of how to structure the purchase. Yeah. Um, you've got an offer of commercial finance, yeah. um, and the opportunity to work with your good self. So, if anybody out there knows anybody, the opportunity to work with this guy here, Ron Thompson, my business partner, yeah. is um, is there's an amount of money required for a deposit, yeah, yeah. And if someone were to come at you with a few hundred thousand pounds, whatever it might be, yeah. What what could they expect? What would their return be? Well, I was as you said at the beginning, it's 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 got to be um, a good deal for both parties. Win -win, so yeah. I, I'm I'm more than happy to discuss what whatever the JV wanted to make the deal happen mm -hmm. and to make it a good deal for them, mm -hmm. not not just a good deal for me. It has to it has to work for everybody. Yeah. So potentially, I mean, it could be a share of the revenue. Yeah. Could be interest. Yeah. Could be all sorts of things. Yeah. Could even be a share of the capital allowances, couldn't it? Yeah, I've had a, a quick chat with. Um, the finance pro, uh, sorry, the um, accountancy group is going to be looking after it, and they've ju just done a very quick assessment, and they think the capital allowances will be in the region of uh, 155,000. Which means that there's 155,000 pounds um, completely tax-free for someone. Yeah. And if you spent any money on it to sort of do it up a bit, that would seriously yeah. bump it. Just reflecting on your last eight months in the mastermind, has your mindset regarding property and money changed at all? Oh, massively. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely massively. Yeah. And. Which, because most people, when they they're considering property education, they they want like the technical stuff, like the capital ounces, the stamp duty, the, mm. the whatever. I mean, just sort of standing back, you've been in it long enough now to know. Yeah. What what would you perceive the main benefits of mastermind to be? 
it's just the massive the massive amount of knowledge there is in the in the group mm -hmm. you know and you're on tables with a, a mentor of, of with five or six other people everybody's like-minded so it's a really, it's always a positive day and a, mm -hmm. a positive table and everybody wants the same things really i, I think but i think being surrounded by like-minded people is, is a massive bonus and up until i got involved in mastermind not only did I not know anything about property or property investment, I didn't know any like-minded people either. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> there so, you, go. you know, <laughs> it was a start from scratch for myself. All without, right. Without a doubt. Perfect. Uh, start from scratch in what my dad used to call his third age. Because for my dad, you were young. Yeah. Then you were middle-aged. Yeah. You didn't get old. You yeah. then had your third age. No, no, absolutely, yeah. I'm in my third age. Yeah, I remember at university, um, one of the students said to me, are you a mature student? And I said, no, I'm just older than you. Uh, so. I'm, a, I'm a very immature 30 year old. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So if people want to contact you, Ron, to talk about, you know, joint ventures generally, or maybe even this this business deal in, in particular, what's the best way for them to contact you? The initial contact's better be made by maybe direct email, which is all lowercase, is Ron, at havensolicitors.co.uk. Perfect, and I'm sure that'll be on the screen, Mr. Ron Thompson, in all the uh, touchdown groups. Yeah. And reach out and get hold of him. He's a very, very wise man. He's been around for a long time, and he's going to be around for a lot longer. And I'll be here this Friday at the deal clinic and the, uh, and the party afterwards. Good. I'll be here too, you've relieved to know. Good lad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think we've covered it all today. Yeah. We've had 19-year-old conveners, immature students. It's still immature. It's still immature. <laughs> Property deals, all sorts of stuff. So, as always, you've been wonderful. We've been Paul and Ron, and we'll I see you next time.